As I've always said, it's great to have options. And for those that want to play Game Boy Advance games on the big screen, well, it looks like we have yet another. The folks over at Gamebox Systems, who have previously made other consoleizing kits such as the GBHD Color and GBHD Classic, have just unveiled their next product, the GBHD Advance, a beautiful consoleizing kit for the Game Boy Advance. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito, and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today, we'll be taking a look at this. This is another kit that turns your Game Boy Advance into a home console, utilizing a full-size HDMI port on the back and FPGA technology under the hood. Now, we've looked at kits like this before, such as Woozle's Fantastic Consoleizer, as well as the Intech kit, but this one stands out for a few reasons, which we'll get into later on in the video. All right, y'all know the drill. First things first, I'm gonna go over all the parts that come in this kit. Then I'll show you how to put it all together, go over the kit's features while also doing a side-by-side -side comparison to Woozle's kit, review the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. All right, getting into the contents of the kit, the first and probably most important component is the main PCB. This is, as I like to say, the brains of the operation, with the main attraction being the beefy FPGA chip. Much like Woozle's updated consoleizer, this kit also uses a flex ribbon, which was beautifully designed by Helder. It elegantly pulls button inputs, clock, and audio signals directly from the GBA's CPU. This allows for a clean and professional installation, but of course requires you to be skilled with a soldering iron. Also in the kit are a 32 and 40 pin ribbon cable, making it compatible with both variants of the GBA motherboard. Additionally, to put everything together, we have a set of machine screws. And lastly, you get a beautifully made 3D printed shell. These come in an assortment of colors, such as this translucent aqua. And it also surprisingly comes fitted with brass bosses, which makes screwing everything together a breeze. Really awesome that they incorporated details like this into their design. Okay, so we saw everything that came included in this kit. Now let me show you how to put it all together. So with your donor console in hand, we first need to extract the motherboard. Perfect. Next, we need to remove the speaker. Once that's done, it's the battery contacts next. I like to heat the pads with my iron while pulling them off with some needle nose pliers. Looks like there's some old residual flux, so I'll clean that up real quick. Okay, brace yourselves. Now for the hard part. We need to solder the flex cable to the GBA CPU. First, I apply some liquid no clean flux to the legs and then add just the smallest amount of solder to the tip of my iron. And then very gently tin the legs that we'll be connecting the flex cable to. Apply some more flux and then do the same to the other set of legs. Next, tin the large square ground pad shown here. Now, very carefully and precisely align the ribbon cable to the legs on the CPU. There are markings on the flex that assist with this alignment. Once everything looks plumb, tack the flex cable to the large ground pad, which will help anchor everything down. Then add some more flux, and again, with just the smallest amount of solder on your iron, begin to make the connections. Take your time and add more solder as needed. 
I like to do small sweeping motions away from the CPU pins. Go over your work until you are satisfied with the joints, and also take care to watch out for any bridged connections. Now moving over to the next set of CPU legs, follow the same steps. Here I'm using some tweezers to ensure that the flex cable is flush to the board. Next, we need to solder the flex cable to pin 32 shown here. This will help anchor and secure the flex cable. Then do the same on the opposite side. Helder and Gamebox Systems added these very convenient pads on the cable so that we can easily check to make sure we made good solid connections. After everything checks out, this is what a fully installed flex cable should look like. Next, we need to solder a wire to the cartridge pin labeled S2. And the other end of that wire to the lower R16 pad on the GBHD board shown here. And this is what it should look like. Next, grab the motherboard and make a slight S bend in the flex cable as shown and plug it into the ZIF connector on the GBHD board, then lock the bail. Now we need to identify what type of motherboard we have. Under the LCD connector, we can see that I have a 40 pin model. So grab the included 40 pin cable and insert it into the connector. and then insert the other end to the GBHD board with the contacts facing up. And this is how everything should look before we put it into the 3D printed case. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and grab our case and remove the top cover. Before we put in all of our electronics, drop in the small push button which will be used to turn the console on and off. Then place the electronics into the shell with the GBHD board going in first. Once in, secure it in place using four short screws. Then grab the motherboard and tuck the excess ribbon cable underneath it. Align the motherboard with the brass bosses and secure it down again with the short length screws. Grab the cover and place it on the console. Flip it over and secure it with the remaining four long screws. And there you have it, the GBHD Advance. I really like how this kit came together. The case itself, I think, has a very nice aesthetic and the GBHD Advance really has a nice list of features. Speaking of which, let's go over them right now. To check out all the features, we need to access the GBHD Advance menu system. You simply need to press and hold the start and select button for about a second. This will open the on-screen display, which presents quite a few adjustable settings. I'll just go over the ones that I find most interesting. So taking a look, we see first one of the more unique features, which is that this kit supports three resolutions, 480p, 720p, and 1080i, which scales the Game Boy Advance image three, four, and six times respectively. Pretty awesome. I myself prefer the 720p at four times integer scaled because I just think it looks beautiful and super duper sharp. Now, unfortunately, this kit didn't play nice with my capture card, which is an Elgato Camlink Pro, and I could only show you 480p and 720p. 1080i wouldn't display, but we'll get into that a bit later. Next, you can also adjust the scaling. There are three options. There's prop for the correct GBA aspect ratio, STR, which stretches the image to make it full screen, and then there is the TV option, which slightly windows the stretched full screen image. Moving down the list, we next have pixel smoothing. There are three levels of smoothing to choose from, but I prefer razor sharp pixels, so I just leave this option turned off. 
Now, this kit wouldn't be complete if we didn't have the ability to turn on artificial scan lines. For those that like that aesthetic, they are offered in three different thickness levels. Additionally, you can adjust the border color, which is pretty nice. There are 64 colors to choose from, but I prefer good old fashioned black. Now, moving on to the physical features of the GBHD Advance, we first have a full size HDMI port, which I think is an absolute must for kits like this because I really don't like using adapters, so it's really great that they opted to use a full size one. And right next to the HDMI port, we have the power input, which is delivered via USB C, which again is a welcome design choice. And of course, around front, there is the SNES port, which not only works with the original SNES controller, but also wireless ones like this 8 bit DO SN30. So, those are all the features I think really stand out on the Gamebox GBHD Advance. But now, let's take a look at how this kit compares with what I think is its main competitor Woozle's Consoleizer. So as you can see, comparing them side by side, they both offer high quality, properly integer scaled images with the correct aspect ratio at 720p. And both quite frankly, just look fantastic. Now the GBHD kit does offer 1080i resolution scaled six times. So it does have that added feature set. However, it's something that I'm unable to capture at this time with my current setup. So really, I think that these kits are very comparable in terms of the video quality that they offer. But there are some other differences, which leads me into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, I think the biggest one is price. If you just want to buy the kit, it'll cost you about 160 bucks. That's a very compelling price for this type of mod. For comparison, at this time, Woozle's Consolizer kit costs about 210 for a comparable kit. Additionally, for those that don't want to build the kit themselves, Gamebox offers pre-built units starting at about $300, which again I think is a very compelling price point. You have to remember that the price includes a donor Game Boy Advance motherboard, which is pretty incredible. And compared to a fully built Woozle Consolizer from Game Tech US, you'll have to pay about $500, which is considerably more expensive. Now another pro of the GBHD Advance is the absolutely stunning image quality the kit provides with a pixel perfect aspect ratio. Additionally, once the flex cable is installed, it is fairly easy to put everything together. With features like the embedded brass bosses, installation is clean and simple. And lastly, the kit offers some pretty neat innovative features such as on the fly resolution and scaling switching. This is done by pressing L, R, select and up all at the same time. Utilizing the button combination negates the need to navigate through the on-screen menus, which is pretty convenient. All right, so that's a pretty compelling list of pros, but now let's get into the cons. And for me, I think the biggest con is audio compatibility. Unfortunately, much like Woozle's kit, audio compatibility is hit or miss. I wasn't able to get audio to come through my Elgato Camlink Pro capture card, nor my Yamaha AV receiver in my home theater setup. However, when connected directly to my Samsung HD television, I was able to get sound. Now, the only other issue I think is of course the installation of the flex cable. This obviously will be challenging for a lot of folks, which is why on the flip side, it's great that Gamebox offers pre-built units at a very competitive price, which again includes a donor Game Boy Advance motherboard. I really can't stress that enough. So overall, I think this is a real quality kit with a sleek design and a lot of great features. Honestly, I think that both the Gamebox and Woozle kits offer the same high quality video output in a fantastic package. But I give a slight edge to the folks over at Gamebox due to their competitive pricing. Anyway, what do you all think? Is the new Gamebox GBHD Advance the end all be all consoleizing kit? Let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next Thursday.